Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Zoomtopia studio. I'm Ron Strawn, the healthcare CIO advisor for Zoom, and I'm happy to be with Dave Strickland, who is a telehealth expert for a, a large nonprofit uh, healthcare provider organization. So again, thank you, Dave. Appreciate the time and you being here. So a few questions for you today. So first, a lot has changed in the last few years in healthcare, and especially with the expansion of telehealth and remote patient care uh, becoming very prevalent and continues to be so. So in your opinion, what's the biggest win or wins, plural, that you've seen in the change in how we're working and especially as perhaps how it affects patient care? Well, you know, Ron, when we started out, in, in COVID, uh, telehealth and care at home, they, they were nice to have workflows. They were not something that were baked into our care delivery model. And we had a lot of folks who were early adopters or they were interested in trying something different out. So they did. Um, it, it wasn't this fully realized model. And now what, what COVID has forced us to do was really live into these virtual workflows in a way that that deeply ingrained them into that that care delivery model and that process. And it really helped with change management. So when somebody does something once a year, they're they're probably not going to become an expert at it. But right. when you do a lot of video visits, uh, you know, on a on a weekly basis, when you're helping patients get familiar with ways to leverage remote patient monitoring technologies at home, everyone's going to get better at it. So there is a rising tide that kind of lifts all those boats and it has so much to do with the fami familiarity of the technology. So we didn't necessarily make these great huge strides in technology over the last couple of years. The technology was there. It probably wasn't refined well enough. One thing that we have learned with a lot of feedback from physicians and nurses and, and, and patients or members as well is, well, we need to make the experience a little bit better um, and so I think that's where a lot of our energy has been. So we get to take something that was working probably pretty well or adequately and making it hopefully better or great. And that's the thing that I, I think is really exciting right now. Right. So how would you envision one, one feature going from good to great, not to borrow from a book, yeah. um, but how would you envision one impactful change in delivery of, health, in, of care uh, especially in a telehealth platform? Well, I, I think it's really the care at home, right? So we've had care at home in some level for a while. And, and again, going back a few years ago, people thought care at home was like, uh, it was a phone call, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it was a video visit and it was a couple other things. But now we've really gotten to a level where you can do most of your basic uh, visits, like a, a, a primary care provider can be at home. Um, a lot of pre-surgical things, uh, probably don't warrant a visit in person. Um, and now you can do those remotely and, and really trying to make it a preferred workflow for our clinicians and for our members in a lot of cases. Win-win. So I think that stuff really helps. And then you get down to the level of like, well, what can and should we be caring for at home? Um, uh, so increasing acuity, we can, we can do that pretty well out of the home. And a lot of organizations are having a great deal of success with hospital at home programs. And so you, you know, one thing that you're not gonna get at home is a hospital inquired affection. When that's correct. When you're recovering, right? So, and, and people wanna recover at home. So they've been asking for this for years. There wasn't really a forcing function to make it happen. And, and now it, it has. And I think that uh, is where we're gonna see a lot more energy coming over the, the, the next few years is now we've, we've kind of proven it Yes. Um, now can we prove it at scale and, and at great quality? And, I, and to your point, I think there's some data available that shows that patients heal better, meaning more completely, faster, and of course, more comfortably at home when it's the right setting. Yeah, it, it's such an important point, Ron, because um, in healthcare, we're always struggling to give the, the, the patient or the member what they want. And very often, like you can't give them exactly what they want or exactly what they're asking for. And in this case, we really can. And the person that gets connected probably the most, or we have the greatest potential to connect more to this experience is the caregiver. Yes. And that's huge. Um, I, I don't know how it is for you. I'm at a point in my life where, you know, I'm, I'm providing uh, or, or helping out yes. uh, a lot more with my, with my parents 
some of, and my mom has a really progressive health condition, so I got to spend a lot of time working with her. And for me to be able to do more out of the home or more remotely yes. is huge because there's, everyone's got enough going on. Um, so in healthcare, can we make things easier for people? Yes. Uh, and, and I think that's where the more energy we put towards that, the better outcomes we're going to continue to see with folks. Totally agree. And, and like you, I've been through that process and, and these improvements literally can be life changing. Absolutely. Yes. So let's see, we've covered this next question um, accidentally, but we've covered that. And it was, could you share some innovative strategies or technologies that have emerged in the healthcare uh, as a result of the changing delivery methods? Well, it, it's, I'll go a little bit further on it, sure, right? Please. Where um, one of the things that I, I think we're thinking about more and more in, in healthcare is around how to not just deliver a virtual care technology, but how to really embed it and, and make it more seamless. Mm -hmm. So we, it, it's something we really need to focus on because you have a lot of different channels of contact right. for members, and we really do need to unify that experience. Um, one thing that I've seen a lot of uh, programs like pursuing and healthcare organizations pursuing in recent years is virtual urgent care. Right, so that's where you have these different solutions, and they can be phone, they can be e-visits, they can be video or RPM, remote patient monitoring. Right. But when you can um, respond immediately, hey, do you, or do you want a clinical chat with a clinician right now, or do you want to wait for a phone call, or do you want to schedule a video visit? Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty transformative, too, because I think the experience that most of us have in healthcare is like, I call, I get an appointment set up, and it's a couple of weeks from now, and then I have to go in and meet with somebody in person. Yeah. If you can get your concern taken care of right away, then I think there's a lot of value and interest there for the for the member, but then also for the clinical teams too. It's hey, do you want to wait for a doctor, or would you be willing to speak to an RN right. or a physician assistant? Yes, and it gives more choice to people, and and we find usually when we can provide more choice, and that choice can be kind of curated through. Um, through staffing and availability of folks to do that, um, to, to deliver that care, it, it really does help on, on both ends and decant some of this, just this demand that we have right now that continues to be really huge that healthcare is still struggling with right. um, for a number of reasons. Well, especially rapidity to care doesn't necessarily mean rapidity for the care being provided because let's say I have something that I want to talk to a nurse or, or other provider about and if I can get an answer quickly, that's like, oh, okay, I can wait for that appointment in a week or two weeks or the referral to the specialist that I'm not, I don't have an emerging issue per se. Right. And that's worth a lot to the patients. Absolutely. So, I mean, that that's huge. So, I mean, you're really able to respond to people in the moment mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully give them that level of personalized care that they, they're really expecting. I, you know, I think that's that's one of the things that healthcare is seeing now that, that's probably still changing is these other, like that hasn't happened for healthcare yet, but all these other industries, like I expect them to know who I am, what my needs are, what my former orders were or issues were. And, I, you know, I think that's where healthcare tends to sometimes be a laggard with certain technologies. Right. And where if they can catch up quickly, um, you know, I think you're going to, you're going to meet the expectation, Same. which by the time they meet it, look, it's going to accelerate even further down the road, but that's, that's the opportunity now is we got to do more as it relates to that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So once, once you positively identified me as a patient or member, don't make me repeat my history, right? Because you should have access to that and yeah. ready access. So to your point, it, um, th the time has come for that higher service. Yes. I mean, and, and anybody, anybody that's ever got in for an appointment in person and you fill out the form and then you go meet with the human being afterward, they ask you all the same questions you just walked through. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. Guys. Like not. we can do better than that. That's right. We yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we will be. Yes. Great. So how do you think patient experience is evolving in light of the development of AI mm -hmm. and what strategies can healthcare uh, leaders implement to ensure patient satisfaction, engagement, and I'll add to that, outcomes. 
Yeah, and I'm glad you added outcomes at the end. Um, but, you know, a moment before I was talking about virtual urgent care. Yes. Right, and the need to solve for that. And I also kind of alluded to the fact that, well, we got a lot of different channels of care. Yep. And people have talked about omni-channel um, in, in right. the industry for a long time. And, and I do think that that type of context awareness and having it uh, be pervasive throughout your care environment, not just your care, but your member contact environment, Yes. is is uh, potentially revolutionary to folks. And you know what what we found over the last few years in in healthcare is that there are a lot of things that spiked during COVID in terms of certain visit types or certain activities. And then most of that uh, has returned to earth, right? or to pre-pandemic levels or to something that's a little bit above. So maybe sure. clinical video visits, right? That's something that, we saw a huge spike. Most of that's kind of returned to, to nominal levels. But the one of the things that has it is the asynchronous communications, the ability to just send a doc an email right. and say, I got a question. And, and to the same point we were just talking about earlier, you don't always need an MD level response for those questions. That's correct. You just need an yeah. intelligent response that's personalized to you as yeah. the member. And uh, if we can find a way to create more awareness there so that we're not having to have the same conversation with each different modality or channel that we interact with. Yes. It's an incredible dissatisfier. Yes. And basically every time you do that, it's that organization saying back to you, I don't know who you are. Right. And I'm not listening. It erodes trust. And that's, that's, that's the biggest thing that I, I think it does. So every time you interact with a brand in any way, when that brand reinforces, I, I don't know who you are or what you're talking about, that's what it does, is it really does erode the trust and you just feel like you're a number as right. opposed to a person. And in healthcare, you know, we're only talking about lives. Yes. It's yeah. important. I'll say it is. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. So what's the biggest challenge that must be overcome for mass adoption of AI in healthcare? I mean, we're, we're in its infancy but it's growing very quickly. There's a lot of growing concern about how AI is going to be applied to such things like healthcare, because to your point, we're only talking about lives here. Mm -hmm. So some thoughts on that. Well, and you just touched on it, Ron, too. It's, it's trust, right? So I, I think with, um, with physician leaders in particular and, and with, uh, with the general public and, and you know i think you're willing to give trust in a lot of uh relationships and interactions when the stakes are relatively low right right you know if you're ordering something online and then uh and a you know there's some kind of challenge or that again the system forgets who you are um maybe you don't worry that much when it's healthcare, uh, you know, I, I think you do worry inherently. And you're probably, the thing that's prompted you to contact folks in the first place is some kind of a worry yes. about your health or the health of a loved one. Right. Um, so I'm talking about my, my mom earlier who I'm caring for. I'm also caring for my kids. Mm -hmm. This is really important, right? So um, how do we build trust and do it in a way that, that really accelerates? Because what we're seeing is just the... Um, uh, the, the the spread of AI at a at a pace that is um, difficult to keep up with in healthcare, and I talked about healthcare kind of lagging a bit. Right. So how do we gain trust, build trust on both sides? I think that's really the important thing. It's not just about consumers and the populace and 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 members and and folks out there. It's it's about the clinical staff. And the good news is, I, I mean. Never uh, fail to take the opportunity uh, to, to leverage a crisis, right? So COVID was a big deal. And we're having folks saying, I am absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of messaging I'm getting. Sure. You know, my inbox as a, as a, as a doctor is, is uh, unmanageable right now. So now, the, you know, folks who have never come to us saying, I want AI to, to help me at all because I need to have uh, responsibility or accountability for those interactions. Yep. They're really coming to us with a with a different ask, which is so important. They're saying, "Help me operate at the top of my scope. Yep. Help me, you know, take out these things that are non-value add for me. Non-value. It's actually taking me longer to respond to a, a member or to a patient 
with a um, probably not even as good a response as you, they might get in an automated fashion. Can we do more of that so that the things I'm answering are just so vital to yeah. that person yeah. and really to my relationship with them as a physician? Um, so once people are buying in and they're saying, I want this, then the change management, which I was talking about before earlier too, it comes a lot easier. Yes, it does. Rather than say, I, I've never been greeted that warmly as a technician or a technologist when I've come in and said, hey, great news. I've got a solution for a problem you didn't know you had or you didn't ask for. It reminds me of the phrase that um, I've used in the past, and it's probably familiar with you, is when it comes to technology, we'd like to do it with you, not to you. you. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. Yes. Well, great. Well, Dave, thank you for the time today at the Zoomtopia uh, Theater here at Zoomtopia 23. Your, your comments, extremely insightful. And uh, again, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks, Ron.